specifics. Um, it's above my pay grade to talk about um, specific budgets. Um, but I can tell you that it is a high priority. Um, I can tell you that we've been working um, to try and find new ways in which we can encourage, um, with incentives and funding, um, the leap from the laboratory into the commercial sector. Um, in particular, we um, set up a working group that I was closely involved in um, that um, aimed to replicate a series of um, venture uh, clusters around every major university and research centre in the UK so that you don't just have one or two beacons of excellence, but actually you have these incubators right the way across the, the UK as standard because we, you know, have George Osborne, for example, went to Silicon Valley, went to California, was incredibly impressed that all of the, you know, long-term sustainable jobs <coughs> were coming out of SMEs, not, not um, you know, large um, multinationals. Um, this is where the growth is, that, and we see that's where we want the growth in the UK economy to be. And you can't have that unless you have a robust and well and well funded for the long term scientific community. Um, with respect to the forum for just transition, there won't be. A, a, I don't expect a specific reference to it um, in our green paper. Um, that's not to say that it's not a wor worthy organisation. I'm not particularly familiar with it, but the principles that you um, articulate um, the need to build a consensus, the, the need to take people with you, the need to um, plan for this transition, the need for um, the need to upskill our workforce. And when people talk about skills, um, and it wasn't a deliberate omission from mine, I only had 20 minutes, but I can rabbit on, for, on skills for ages. But the, the thing about skills that we have to remind, it's not just about equipping the next generation. It's not just about our schools or FE colleges or universities. Actually, the majority of the things that we need to do to re-engineer our economy over the next decade, two decades, are going to be done by people who are already in work. And having an effective mechanism to enable and support these people um, in various places in the workforce, not just at the very top, but right the way through the sort of the skills mix is going to be incredibly important from people who are going to deliver the basic home energy um, Im efficiency improvements or the micro generation um, uh, revolution to people who are going to be working on quite complex um, engineering um, challenges in offshore wave um, uh, tidal um, and wind. It's clear that if we're going to move our economy at the scale we require, it will require big shifts in the, in the way that our workforce is structured. And I think you have to just bear in mind what David Cameron has always said on this agenda from the very, very beginning, in that we're all in it together. Thank you. Uh, other questions? There was one, I think, um, well, I should, sorry, okay, we've got several. One at the back there and then one there, if we can. Um, yes, sorry, um, uh, to, to your, sorry, do you want to put your hand a bit, a bit higher up so we can see you? Thank you. Sorry, uh, Erica Drew, Goldsmiths College. Um, about five years ago, I had the good fortune to visit um, the project at uh, Cullum into nuclear fusion. Um, and apparently we have enough um, supplies of deuterium and tritium and the only byproduct is helium. Now, I was told then that the research was about 25 years off um, making sort of progress into actual usability, but I see no mention of it here or anywhere else. Has there been any progress on this? Thank you. And then one, yeah, there. Sorry, do you keep, keep your hand up so, so we can see you with the, with the mics. Thanks, sorry, it's, the lights are a little low. Thank you very much. Hi there, Andrea Kachevsky from the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF. I'd like to ask the speakers if they are personally and their organisations are, are committed to a clean, pollution-free uh, future. future. Well, a clean, pollution-free. And, and well, perhaps, perhaps deal with nuclear fusion first. 25 years away, always has been, always will be, as the old, <laughs> as the old joke goes. Um, um, it's not true. <laughs> it's, it's not true, no. Uh, at the moment, we're looking at what are called Generation 3 reactors, and that's what we're, we're, we're looking at at the moment. Generation 4 reactors include fl fusion, and there are projects looking at that and taking that forward, but they are certainly of that sort of distant, distance away. Uh, whether they'll always be, I don't know. But uh, at the moment, they are not uh, on, on the immediate horizon in the next 20 years, uh, but there is a project on Gen 4. And, and is the HSE committed to clean, um, non-plutable, 
Yes, it is. It, we're working very closely with the Environment Agency. That is, that is our aim, to protect people and society from the, uh, the hazards of the nuclear activities, and that includes the environment as well. Thanks. Greg? Um, yeah, on nuclear fusion, I mean, I take my cue from the experts and and uh, like you would, I mean, I, I have a little bit of scepticism that there has always been this rolling, uh, f rolling horizon um, of when it will become available. But obviously, if it were to be um, uh, available um, to use commercially and at scale, it would it would be a huge opportunity. But as someone who aspires to be in government next year and who is very focused on the delivery of a low carbon um, electricity supply within a 20-year um, fr framework, um, clearly you have to uh, focus on things which are a lot more deliverable near at hand. Um, are, we f are we committed to a clean, pollution-free um, environment? Uh, that's a great aspiration. I think it would be wrong to pretend that we're going to end pollution per se. I think so long as there are industrial processes, there's going to be some unwanted byproducts. It's how do you minimise that? How do you deal with that um, responsibly. I think what we do have, what I would say is even more important perhaps than that, and what we should be aiming for, is for a resource efficient uh, economy um, where we don't deplete more, and the, more of the Earth's resources